What's going on guys? So today I am out here at the Forest River area of the dealer show here in Elkhart, Indiana. We're going to get to this fine gentleman right here in a second, but I am here at the Riverstone booth. So this is pretty amazing because if you guys have watched my videos, you'll probably know that Riverstone RVs are probably some of the highest featured RVs I show on my channel. And there's a reason for that because they have a legacy. Ah, that was pretty cool. I tied that in. But we're going to talk about some new floor plans they have, some changes to some of the floor plans they have. Okay, so with me today, I have Nick, and he's actually with Riverstone, and we're going to tour several of their units and see what they're all about. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, Nick, show us what we got in front of us here. All right, so this is our 442 MC full body paint. It is the Man Cave. So this one has our legacy package on it, which oh, man, includes nice. full body paint, disc brake upgrade, um, a few other items. It can be kind of like a toy hauler kitchen living room area. Then you come back here, instead of a garage, you just have a nice living room. Um, we made this a bunk model. So it doesn't appear to be bunks right now. You have someone that needs to come with you a couple times a year. You have this sofa that pulls out. Easy out sofa, slick, mm -hmm. easy mechanism. That is cool. Then you have a drop down bunk. I didn't even see that. No one it sees was it. right above my head. I never even saw it. So the rest of the year, you just have a nice living room, but a couple weeks a year, you have someone staying with you, you do have a bunk room available. Oh, this is super cool. That is awesome. So we debuted this floor plan a year ago, um, but we really didn't start getting it to dealers until the last six months. Okay. So we've only built about 70 of them so far, but it was our most popular floor plan out at Hershey. And I expect that to continue. Yeah, this is awesome. That is really cool. I did not expect that to drop down. And part of the reason is because you guys at Riverstone have always been fantastic at kind of integrating things in so they blend well creating a very like cohesive floor kind of pattern to everything because everything just feels so so deliberate and upscale i'm a i'm a big fan of the product i, I actually have and i don't think it's any secret to folks who watch my channel how much i i like the riverstone product no we appreciate all the love you have given us over the past few years um you know happy to hear you recognize that we try to do that with all our products we try to make them as residential as possible also just flow well we, if we see a space we try to make it usable you know there's so many people around here walking through these units right now i don't want to get caught out there real quick and not be able to ask you do you quickly want to go over some of the construction perks of riverstone some of the features and things that you may not be able to see just on the surface but that are here anyways yeah so at riverstone everything's going to be three inch walls we're going to have all steel frames so your upper deck's going to be all steel a lot of brands are going to be partially aluminum on that upper deck construction on your mid deck mm -hmm. you know 80 pounds of propane standard so that's two 40 pound tanks uh 200 watt solar panel standard with a 1500 watt inverter tvs fridge uh the outlets at the desk are all going to be on the inverter um the core construction dual pane window standard um three inch thick side walls three right? inch thick side walls all painted or stained hardwoods depending on what core you go with we do have the white. This is Decorator White. We also have Juno Gray. Gray is going to be a stained wood, so you are going to have some brown show through on that. So it's a really it's a really nice gray. Um, so none of your tops in here are paper wrapped. None of your cabinet face frames. None of your slide out trim, your crown molding, all that stuff. Painted stained hardwoods. Dishwasher, washer dryer are standard on our units. H-rated yeah, well, tires, 17 and a half inch H-rated tires are standard. This unit being a legacy has Goodyear tires on it. Standard are going to be Cooper. Um, most of what you're going to see out in the lots are going to have three ACs. If it's a legacy, the third AC is part of that package. If it's a non-legacy, most people are going to option it that way. We do have a built-in power management system, so you can actually run all three ACs at one time. If that's you're on awesome. 30 amp service, you can still run two of them. So, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And again, just when you look at the construction that goes behind a Riverstone, it really stands out. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is Forest River's most premium fifth wheel lineup, right? Yes, yeah. So we really came out to play in that absolute top part of the market. Absolutely. So you pretty much gotta go custom built to get above this finish level. And even then, a lot of what you're getting is just the custom built. Yeah. More yeah. so than increased finishes. So cool. bedrooms, washer dryer standard again. We do a king bed in uh, all of our Riverstone floor plans. 
so very nice beautiful i love the valances i love just what you've done with the nightstands on the side absolutely nice thank you you guys do a really good job with these Riverstones. And I always talk about that because in the RV world, you, you tour so many units and, and a lot of them are made to kind of compete in that, that a certain price category. Yep. But when you start getting to your, your higher end, more luxurious units, there are a few that, that try to do certain things that are sometimes a little gimmicky. They might do a lot of really nice luxury amenities, but they build it on a standard frame, mm -hmm. right? A frame is something a lot of people will never see. So to have a better frame, it means a lot to folks who care about the chassis and the components, right? And to have different things like um, a manifold. You guys have a water manifold system yep. as well. The three inch thick sidewalls. A lot of folks don't realize that three inch thick sidewalls is a very rare thing. There's only about five manufacturers in the world that produce, or in the US really, that produce an RV with three inch thick sidewalls. And there's a lot to be said about that because if you had a two inch thick sidewall, most people would never know, especially mm -hmm. if you're new to RVing, you'd never know the difference in terms of the thickness. But insulation wise, it allows you to cram a lot more insulation into your wall. Inch more insulation. You're yeah. essentially going from about an inch and a half insulation to two and a half inches insulation. Yep. yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's the meat and potato stuff you can't really see, right? You gotta either be doing your research and know the products or have a really good uh, sales guy at the dealership, which we do have a lot of them at a Riverstone dealers, um, but still you can only hit so many pieces, right? You're there on a busy Saturday and you're just looking in units. A lot of times they're gonna look similar on the inside, but when it comes to the core construction, you can't replace that all steel frame, you can't replace those sidewalls. You don't like the sofas? You can replace sofas pretty easily in a unit, right? Or change mm -hmm. a backsplash out. But the construction benefits you get at Riverstone, that stuff you can't change once you buy a unit. Yep, your plumbing, the electrical, the fact yeah. that you guys are running 8,000 pound axles, 17 and a half inch wheels and tires. A lot of people think, well, I can just add some of that to my RV. And you really can't because you're playing that game of weakest link. You know, no matter mm -hmm. what you do, the weakest link is always gonna be the one that fails first. So just because you might throw a bigger tire on or a bigger wheel, things like that, it doesn't necessarily mean you've truly improved the, the structure or the ability for it to tow safely down the road. On. Um, disc brakes. Yeah, so disc brakes are part of the legacy package. So this unit has disc brakes on it as well. Awesome. This thing is super cool. Three AC units. I like how they have the ducted whisper quiet system. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of manufacturers now are going to the through style that's quiet, but it's still not going to be as quiet as this ducted, uh, this ducted system that's in here. And then we also do Truma water heater standard, the Aquago Comforts. Yep. So, so that's a big feature as well. Tankless water heater as well. Let's take a look in the restroom because they always have beautiful restrooms. And this one does not disappoint lighting some of the things that they've done i love the fact that they have the solid surface countertop with the integrated sink basin in it beautiful cabinetry all hardwood absolutely gorgeous i love the crown molding they put in these units even the trim that they put in the shower is beautiful but check out that shower surround now this shower surround that That's feels like a solid year. surface what it's is not that? solid surface but it is about a quarter inch thick instead of a lot of them are pretty thin and they feel a little flimsy to them right so we went with something a little heavier duty it's definitely sturdier than what we've used in the past um, it's called polymarm it's a pretty common uh, residential product actually that is very nice absolutely gorgeous thank you let's step outside and take a look at the outside of this unit okay so now we are on the outside and we're going to take a look Ooh. at some of the uh Filled well, up in the pass-through storage. Well, there's nothing wrong with that because that's what it's for, right? <laughs> that's right. Look at that steel frame right there. I always highlight that in videos. And well, before I do that, I always talk about the thickness of doors too. Check out how thick that baggage door is. A lot of people say, well, why does that matter? Well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, most of the time when you look inside of the basement compartment of an RV and you see aluminum up here, it's not a bad material. It's strong, it's lightweight but it's not structural to the actual components of the frame and chassis. It's designed just to be able to support the bath area. That's why they call it the bath deck. At Riverstone, this portion right here is actually structural to the frame of the RV. So it just increases the rigidity and the strength of the frame overall. Did I get that wrong at all? No, that's 100% correct. It takes all your, we all know the hardest, most flexing point on the fifth wheel is gonna be this front corner, right? Yep. So it's gonna take all that road stress and disperse it over this whole area of the frame Instead of, that's why you see most guys are gonna have one propane tank, you slide out. So you got a steel frame coming in your unit that's about that big, and all your road stress is going across that little area. Here we stretch it all the way out, disperses it over a bigger area of the frame, it's gonna be a more solid frame, it's gonna hold up better and longer. And it's still so. sitting on a 12 inch I-beam frame as yes, well. 12 inch main beam as well. So, so. And that is awesome. 
Again, you got these thick baggage doors. Um, what is really nice about thick baggage doors, and I talk about this a lot, especially these heavier duty, denser doors, is when you start cramming stuff inside of here, that stuff can shift and move around. Some RVs that use the real thin doors, the door is the only thing that prevents it from jostling around and falling out and going down the road when you're driving down the road. Yeah. Having really thick, robust doors is just a much more structural way to keep things inside of your compartments. And at the same time, when you have a heated underbelly, you have heated compartments like this, it adds a bit more insulation to keep that area climate controlled. Perfectly Very nice. Said. Love those slam latches. Yeah. One nice little feature we do is we throw midship turn signals on all of our floor plans. So running down the side of the unit, you're always going to have a turn signal. You picture a semi, you've got lights running down the side of the semi. Most guys don't do it, but it's nice to let people know you're coming over when you're pulling something that's 40 to 45 feet long. Yep. And you know what's nice about this as well? Most of your turn signals or most of your lighting that you see on the side of RVs are like $5 light pods. Mm -hmm. They're typical. That right there is like a $25, $30 light pod. It is a far higher end light. This is typically what you would see at the back end of a trailer, which is really nice that you guys put it here on the side. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things where you wonder, what am I paying for? Incrementally, you're paying for a lot of small things that add up into something that's really nice. 100%. It's a similar concept to our rear tail lights. They're a three inch LED light, which you can get pretty common and cheap. But if you look at the ones we use, they're like an automotive light. The inside of them is actually chrome with lights, so they're very reflective and they put out a serious amount of light. Um, along with having like your two reds, when we get to the rear, we've got uh, reverse lights as well. Yep. And this is where you have two 40 pound tanks. Again, that all steel upper deck allows us to throw our tanks side by side. Very nice. Love 40 pound propane tanks too, especially if you're running a generator. Do we have a generator on this unit? This unit does not have one. It is generator prepped. We do a full gen prep. So you've got your propane lines, all your electrical. The generator, if you add it later or get it from the factory, either way, it will be on the Firefly system. So you'll have auto gen start. You can start it off battery voltage, interior temperature of the unit. You can set hours for it to go on and off. This particular unit's equipped with uh, the four camera system from Furion as well. Okay. So that's gonna give you a side view down each side, rear view and over the door view. Got the Rotoflex up front. Yep. If you wanna know how this works, big thick piece of rubber right here, this rotates. And basically what it does, it dampens the connection between the truck and the trailer. All right, coming around to this side. So this particular floor plan is a six slide unit. Five of those six slides are hydraulic. Everywhere we can use a hydraulic slide, we use hydraulic. Um, when you're going over the frame with this big upper deck, mm -hmm. really anywhere you have a raised slide, it gets very difficult to hide the hydraulic. The bed slides, you do it under the bed. The only electric slide on this unit is the small dresser slide. You know what I like though? They're all through axle, or sorry, through they're all through yeah. frame uh, gear driven slides. Yep. This is huge because a lot of manufacturers will try to use different types of slide mechanisms that in some ways are lighter weight. Um, they may cost a little less, but the reason why through frame is so important is because the frame of the RV supports the weight of the slide, not the sidewall. A lot of brands out there, again, they're using all sorts of different types of slide technologies. A lot of them put pressure on your sidewall, and this is just one way to keep the pressure on the frame where it needs to be. 100%. Um, yeah. Oh, what's this going on back here underneath? So yeah, that so is? that is for the Wastemaster system. So we use the LCI Wastemaster on our legacy package. Okay. What that includes is a 27 foot sewer hose that is a cam lock hose. It's got a nice valve on the outside. Um, the interior of that is all smooth walled, so you don't have anything getting in the ridges. Um, and then it's got its own carrying case, so you can spray that case out and it has drains out of the bottom to drain out. Um, so that's part of the legacy package. Very cool. And then you got a uh, electric cord reel, of course. Yep, so 12 volt power cord reel. That's kind of what I was talking on the rear caps. Um, the interior of that light is a uh, chrome and then there's so uh, like high vis LED lights in there instead of just your, again, you know, the two or three dollar yeah. LED light. One thing I always say is when you're behind a river stone, you know you're behind a river stone. Yeah, so we really developed the cap kind of looking at like buses. Um, I wanted it to look like the back of a nice motorhome because yeah. that's what we try to make the rest of the amenities look like. Absolutely. And you got a 300 pound hitch. That looks like an accessory rack. I'm never one to tell people to tow a trailer behind a fifth wheel. Uh, yes. I know people do it. 
and I know in many cases the fifth wheels are designed for it, but I'm never one of the folks that believes that it's always good to have that type of levered action on the back part of your frame because it transfers through the actual RV. So mm -hmm. even though your frame, I'm sure would be strong enough to be able to be used to tow something, yeah. the fact that I can tell it's for an accessory rack because I don't see any power connections there and I don't see any chain loops, I like that. Yeah, I mean, this particular frame, we actually build on 12 inch monster beam. It's a like a 14 pound a foot I-beam instead of a 10 pound mm -hmm. pound a foot uh, 12 inch I-beam. So yeah, as far as a frame, it's gonna have all the strength of anything out in the market or more. But we're not gonna suggest you tow something behind it. That's not what we design it for. Um, that, the kind of force you can put on the frame of the unit, not to mention the lengths you get into, it just can become unsafe. Absolutely. So. Well, as we come around, you got some, is this, oh wow, so you gave some extra storage on the outside. Yeah, That's so this really is nice. in the back of that entertainment center in the living room. So behind your fireplace, it'd be dead space. So we made a little storage compartment there. I um, love it when that happens. I out. love <laughs> utilizing space that's we, normally dead. We try to. So our outside TVs are optional. There is a outside TV here. It, I got it locked right now. It's okay. But outside TVs, uh, 40 inch Jensen smart TV. Very so. cool. Okay, in regards to the numbers of this unit, I'm not going to show them on this specific unit because you guys are going to be making some really cool upgrades to it really soon. Um, and then also the axles. I mentioned 8K, but that's only going to be if you get a unit with two axles. Correct. But this unit has three axles, so they're actual three 7K axles, which gives you 21,000 pound worth of axle capacity. But what is the number on this unit going to be from a gross uh, vehicle weight so rating? So the GVWR is going to be 24,000 on this unit. 24K, uh, yeah. wow, this is a beast. Yeah, so the hitch weight on this is going to be in the mid threes, depending on how you equip it. With the generator, it's going to be upper threes. Mm -hmm. um, your dry weights are going to be in the low 19s, depending on optional equipment. Uh, so we're bringing that up to 24K GVWR. So you're going to have 4,500 to 5,000 pounds carrying capacity, depending on how you equip the unit. Okay, so my recommendations for something like this from a truck perspective is you need a dually and it needs yeah. to be a modern dually. Um, you need the payload capacity for not just this weight, but the weight of all the people and supplies that are gonna be in the truck itself. So any of your modern duallys properly spec'd out should be able to handle this, as long as you're very careful with how you load up your truck as well. If you're looking at a medium duty truck or even a heavy duty truck like a, a converted Volvo, this is a really great platform to haul with one of those as well. This is above that 20,000 pound range that I usually tell folks that once you go above 21K, you really need to look at your heavier duty trucks, whether it's just a very well equipped dually or it's all the way up to a medium duty sport chassis, all the way up to maybe a, a heavy duty or an HDT truck. So very, very good uh, example of the type of RV you want the right truck to haul. Is this thing half ton towable? No, <laughs> unfortunately, we'd sell a lot more. <laughs> half ton towable at Riverstone is not even a thing, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> so I want. I want to see this Riverstone. If I got it, I would replace Legacy with half ton up there just to mess with people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This thing's half ton. Yeah. This thing's half ton towable. <laughs> you can tow it with your Ranger. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. We're gonna take a look at a few more of these Riverstones. So now's a great time. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks again, Nick, for your time. Yeah. We'll talk to you all again time. soon. Thanks.